Our next talk um, is given by uh, Dr. David Morrison. Um, it's going to be on uh, cosmophobia and or why you don't have anything to be afraid of from the uh, from the sky. And Dr. Morrison was the founding director for the uh, NASA Lunar Science Institute. David. Thanks, Greg. Hi, everybody. I can't see you, but I have the good advantage point that I can look up and see the moon. So while I'm talking, I can be observing the moon tonight, as I hope you all have, and we'll have a chance to look through telescopes further. Um, you know, the, the people that preceded me got to talk about all the fun things. Lunar exploration, Mars exploration, the Laddie mission. And I'm here to talk about a very strange phenomenon. At least it seems strange to me that there are millions of people in this country who are afraid of the sky. They're afraid of the moon, they're afraid of meteors, they're afraid of all kinds of things. And in particular, they think the world is going to end just three months from today. Now to me that's an absurd idea. And I expect it is to you too. But I will bet you that you have some friends or schoolmates or people that are concerned about this because there are about 25 million Americans, according to polls, that don't expect to live beyond the 21st of December of 2012. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this phenomenon, not because I think you guys have fallen for the hoax, but so many people have, I think we need to be sensitive to what's happening here. And part of it is the people who are worried about the end of the world are people that depend exclusively on the internet for their information. Now let me ask, just shout out because I can't see hands, how many of you get your news every day from the internet? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and nothing wrong with that, but if it's the only place you get news, it's pretty easy to fall for a hoax. And this end of the world on December 21st of this year is the biggest hoax that's ever been done on the internet. There are thousands of websites and probably thousands, certainly many hundreds of YouTube videos that will tell you that the world is about to end. This world of ours that's been here for four and a half billion years and doing just fine is suddenly going to be snuffed out with everybody on it three months from now. It's crazy, but let's try to look and dissect a little bit at what these people are talking about. Why do some people think the world will end? There's not just one reason. There's a group of reasons, and the hucksters and liars on the internet have intertwined these so that it seems like a much stronger argument than it really is. Some people say, that the ancient Mayans, the Maya Indians that lived in southern Mexico and Central America, predicted that the world would end on December 21st of this year. That's just not true. They have a complicated calendar, the ancient Mayan calendar, a great accomplishment, consists of many cycles, and one cycle ends in December and turns over with a new one starting, but there is no Mayan prediction of a calamity, of a catastrophe, certainly not of the end of the world. Some people say that the Sumerians, who were a people that lived in Mesopotamia 5,000 years ago and are often credited with being the inventors of civilization, of urban civilization. They built the first cities, the first irrigation systems. They were really, really smart living in the valleys of the Tigris and Euphrates six, seven thousand years ago. Some people say they predicted the end of the world. Again, that's a fiction. If you actually talk to the real scholars who have studied the ancient Sumerians and read the records they've kept, there is not a word there about the end of the world this year. Some people say there is a rogue planet out there, a mysterious planet called Planet X or Nibiru that is headed for the Earth. And of course, if there were a planet out there and it did crash into Earth, that indeed would be the end of the Earth and the end of us. And they say it's coming. Well, think about that. Three months from now, this is going to supposed to hit the Earth and it's supposed to be bigger than the planet Earth. Don't you think you could see it if you looked in the sky? And one of the strangest stories 
that you see on these internet and YouTube sites is people say, oh, we can't see it because it's coming from underneath the earth. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. They don't think it's funny. Underneath the earth implies they think it's a flat earth. And there's a bottom and we can't see anything. Whereas you know we live on a spherical earth. And the whole sky can be seen from the earth. There's no place to hide an incoming object. Well, some of these websites sort of accept that. But they say, well, yes, they, we know there are 100,000, 150,000 astronomers in the world that could see it if it were coming. But the government has them all on the payroll to keep quiet. <laughs> and so the giant conspiracy with every astronomer in the world being told to never tell. Some people write to me and say, you know, they, they write to me asking these questions. They say, I know you work for the government, so you can't tell me the truth. <laughs> Some people say quite explicitly, I understand Congress has passed a law to make it a capital offense for you to tell us about an incoming object. <laughs> weird, weird world we live in. Well, some people think that uh, there will be an alignment of the planets on December 21st. Well, there won't. You know, you can, you can go to one of these planetarium programs on the internet and see the planets are scattered all over the sky. There's nothing lining up. Some say that a solar explosion will destroy civilization. Well, it's true that the sun has an activity cycle and can occasionally put out blasts of, uh, of atomic charged particles that can damage the Earth's upper atmosphere. But not in 2012, not in December of 2012, and, uh, and hardly with enough power to destroy civilization. Unless, of course, you think that being deprived of television for an hour would be the end of civilization. <laughs> None of those facts that I quoted that you see all over the internet is true. There are no scientists that supports any of these claims. Although, in fact, if you want to go on YouTube, you will find dozens of videos with titles like NASA Scientist Confirms End of World. Uh, it's really quite amusing, if you are a NASA scientist, as I am, to look at these strange, uh, strange people in strange places claim, I am a NASA scientist and I'm telling you the world will end. Um, of course, none of this has been covered in newspapers or TV news, except Fox News, Fox News, they've done a couple of stories. So it's really an internet phenomenon, and that's what interests me, that there is a group of people, and a few of you said yes, who get their information from the internet, and not from the more traditional news sources. Should we pay any attention to these crazy ideas? Most scientists would say no. Most scientists I've talked to say, what the heck are you talking about? That's crazy. Uh, no one could believe that's going to happen. Probably most of you would say, nobody could believe that the world was about to end. But there was a poll by Reuters that said that 25 million Americans do not expect to live past December 21st of this year. I think that's scary. Look around you. If this were a typical group, that means within your line of sight would be people who honestly do not expect to live beyond December 21st. What the heck are they going to do as that date approaches? I don't know. I'm a little scared of this. Not because I'm scared of Nibiru or Planet X. I'm a little scared of what some people might do. Now, this is an immediate problem, but it will pass. Three months from today, this is the equinox. Three months from today will be the solstice. And it will be gone, and we won't hear any more about Nibiru or Planet X or, or Planet Alignments, I hope. But there is this broader issue that a lot of people are afraid of the sky. They're afraid of astronomy. I don't understand it. When I grew up, I had a telescope like some of you do in high school. I avidly read Sky and Telescope magazine. I was turned on by things, hey, a comet's discovered or a supernova or something, that's great. There are people who write to me whose first response to any of that is to be afraid. They hear about a supernova a thousand light years away and say, will it kill me? There are people who have written to me and said they're really afraid of the Andromeda galaxy because they heard that three billion years from now it will crash into the Milky Way galaxy. 
There are people who tell me they can't sleep at night because they're worried about the star Betelgeuse. Uh, I think that's weird, but I do have to ask myself, and I'll ask you, why? What is there that we're doing, those of us who are scientists and journalists, about astronomy that instead of making people excited about how wonderful it is, how wonderful the cosmos is, how exciting it is, they're afraid of it. Is it the television shows that uh, always are showing explosions and colliding galaxies and asteroids hitting the Earth? What is it? It's a shame if some people have lost their wonder in the heavens. Thank goodness none of you has. Thank you all for coming out for International Observe the Moonlight. Thank you for looking at the beautiful sky above us and the beautiful satellite we have and recognizing what a wonderful world we live on and what a wonderful cosmos we're part of and it's not about to be destroyed. And thank you for your attention. It brings to mind uh, that just last week um, I was at a, a local elementary school and gave a talk on the moon and I got a lot of questions and one of the last ones, a little girl, it turns out she used to uh, play softball with my daughter, um, she looked at me and kind of shyly said, um, Mr. Schmidt, is, is the earth going to explode any time? And, I, and, uh, and she was clearly very worried about this. And, and I said, no, sweetie, it's not going to explode any time. It's not going to explode in your lifetime. It's not going to explode in your great, 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 great grandchildren's lifetime. You have nothing to worry about. And she gave me a great big smile then. And I hope that she never thinks about that again. Mm -hmm. And I would just ask all of you um, who, uh, who believe this way, too, to, to uh, share this uh, as well. This is a very important uh, message. The, the universe is filled with wonder. And, uh, and that's what we're uh, going to be uh, seeing a little bit later through, the, uh, through all these telescopes. And, uh, and, and that's, I think, how we all want to think about it.